So this week I managed to fit a solar carport in my backyard and it is massive. And this one is made by Chico. And this one's designed to fit two cars underneath it. And up on top we have 24 panels. And with bifacial gain, it can output a little over 12,000 watts. Now when you see the marketing material for this thing, you think it's a cute little carport, but when you build it, it is absolutely massive. Also, it's surprisingly cheap and the larger the carport, the cheaper it gets. If you get a single carport, it's pretty expensive compared to other racking options. And this right here is a two car carport. But if you buy a three or a four car carport, the prices are cheaper than other options on the market, which is crazy because it's freaking huge. Like, look at this thing. Now building this thing was pretty tricky and you're gonna have to have a team of people to do it. And for mine, I use some footings that are three foot tall and they go two feet into the ground. Make sure you consult a real engineer and get a permit and do it properly. Some people slap these on their driveway with four inch slabs and I would never do that, but some people are. And I wanted to lift it up pretty high off the ground. That would improve the bifacial gain. It would lift it up out of the way, especially next to this large garage door. And it would reduce shading from my metal building. So I asked my contractor and he recommends going down two feet with rebar and then three feet. The rebar comes all the way up to here and the studs were set into the concrete. So this thing is super strong, but it took a few days to build this and it cost a few thousand dollars, unfortunately. But once these were done, we could start building. Now mounting the main structure was super simple and with three guys, we could do it in two hours. First, you put the vertical beams. Next, we mounted all of these horizontal beams with the scissor lift. Next, we mounted the horizontal beams and these are called the C channels because they're shaped like a C going this way. Next, I had to build these on the ground and add these brackets and these are called the M rail because it's shaped like an M. And then we mounted the panels one by one and that was not easy. Now for this step, you absolutely wanna rent a scissor lift because you have to bring each panel up one by one and then you use these brackets to secure everything down. Now to make your life a million times easier, take an M rail and then mount the solar panels on the ground for the first one. As long as the first one is set up properly, all the other panels go on pretty easily. Now yesterday when we installed the panels, we did the low side row first. And once that was all lined up, we moved to the second, third, and then the fourth. Now with this model, with this many solar panels, if you're using it with most hybrid inverters, you want it around 400 or 500 volts. And with 24 panels, we can make two strings of 12 panels. And even in cold temperatures, that won't exceed 500 volts. And the max input voltage limit on my hybrid inverter is 600 volts. So this is perfect to connect to two MPPTs. Now the M channel that connects to the solar panel brackets, that's where all the rain collects and then it comes down to the end over over here. But vertically, where the panels come together from the high to the low side, there's a crack and you can see the light coming through between my panels. And the company supplies some rubber stripping, so this is supposed to seal between those. But they told me it's a lot easier just to apply silicon after. Now when it comes to wiring the system, you're pretty much on your own. So for me, because my system's over here next to this corner, I'm gonna add conduit to this, and then I'm gonna run the conductors over there. Now what's really cool about this system is there's not much wasted space. If you have an Integra rack on the ground, you cannot use that ground. But with this, you can put cars underneath here or whatever you wish. Next, it's easier to maintain. So if one of the solar modules breaks, you can swap it out in minutes. Next, it's very hard for pigeons to nest underneath it. I had a pigeon problem on my grid tie array and it was awful. But with this one, you can't have pigeons underneath here because you just have the solar panel and nothing which also increases the bifacial gain. You don't get bifacial gain when you mount these on top of a roof. Next, if you already have a solar system, this is very easy to add. And a lot of people have a driveway, so you just throw this up and wire it to your system. Next, because it's just a carport, it's pretty easy to permit. But a lot of people are not permitting it. I heard that they're putting it into slabs without footings. I would never do that in a million years, but a lot of people are. Now, if you live in the desert like I do, a lot of people spend lots of money for shades but you'll notice that the cost of this thing compared to those is pretty comparable so you might as well just throw some solar panels and get this one also it's huge you could easily put a jacuzzi underneath it you don't have to use it as a carport next it looks cool look at this thing it is so big and it looks amazing 
I have zero plans taking this thing down. Next, let's talk about the cons. So first off, the self-tapping screws are awful. Don't even attempt to use them buy your own. Next, the marketing needs work. If you look at the pictures online, you're like, okay, that's kind of neat. But in person, it is incredible. It is completely different than the pictures. They also sell a heavier duty one that can go up to 185 mile per hour wind rating. But for most people, this is plenty strong. I don't think anyone watching this needs more than this unless you're in a hurricane prone area. But it's hard to tell the difference. So be sure to read and check the prices because this one is a lot cheaper. The other one is called the Maximo and it costs quite a bit more. It's almost double the cost of this. Also, these things used to be like $20,000 for this many solar panels a couple years ago. Now it's only a little over $5,000, which is crazy. Next, when you build this thing, you need a scissor lift and you need multiple people. This is not easy to build on your own. You need help. And never would I attempt this with a ladder. You need an actual scissor lift and you can rent them for the day for very cheap. Next, this whole kit comes in a large metal frame box and it is awfully big. It's super heavy and super hard to move. I used a pallet jack and a table lift and I rolled it into my backyard. Now the box that it comes with is made out of square tubing and it's very large and very heavy. So what I did is I chopped it up into sections and I gave it to my neighbors. You could build tables out of it. You could make a firewood holder, all sorts of stuff. You can get pretty creative, but you have to do something with that thing and it's huge. Next, you need to contact the company before you start building it because you have to measure everything so that the solar panels align properly. If not, you're gonna have a nightmare of an installation. So make sure you call them up and ask. Next, the manual, you're gonna to wanna to print that thing out and study it for a few hours. You wanna know every step of this install. It's simple, but you need to do it right. And I think the hardest part besides the concrete is installing the panels. If everything's lined up properly, it's very easy, but it's still difficult getting those things up that high with a scissor lift. It's even harder if you're gonna use a ladder. So please rent a scissor lift. It will be worth every single penny, I promise. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'm gonna make more videos on this, but I wanted to give a general overview and pros and cons. Just to give you an idea of what it's like to have this thing. For me, I freaking love it. Look how cool it is. It is so big and it looks amazing. You could put a hammock underneath there. You could put a jacuzzi, you could put a truck, you could put anything. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. And the output of this thing is gonna be incredible with that bifacial gain and there's no shading. It's gonna take all of the sun without any shading from any of the buildings around it. Most people won't have to lift it up as much as I did, but I like the benefits of doing that. It makes it more usable and it makes it look more cool, but you have to use the appropriate appropriate size footings and you have to get signed off with an engineer if you want to do that. And once it's built properly, you can leave it there for decades. So do it right the first time. I hope you guys like this video and there's more to come. I'll see you later. Bye.